our Pong dunkable assemble Pong tutorial part one. We did the user interface. It's part two. We're going to get into doing some block coding. First thing we want to do is create a timer component here. We got to set some parameters here. We want the timer to go off every one second, and we want uh, three things to be true. So we got our timer. We're going to initialize a couple variables. We'll start off with score. Let's set score to zero. And just do this the fast way. We also need a time variable. So let's copy. Set that to 20. Our next step is when the canvas loads. So let's get that. It's under the core menu. Oh, that is under the canvas menu. When canvas one loads, we want to put place the ball a certain place. So that will also be under the canvas menu if I can get it to the stability motion. We want to move, we'll use this block that says the paddle that goes switches over the ball. And we want to move it to a random uh, x value, but we'll set the y value at zero, which will be all the way at the top. To get the random x value, run the math. Random integer between one and 300. So it's, uh, it'll move to a random place, left or right, but it'll be all the way at the top of our screen. Uh, we want to make sure when the game start, game screen starts. So let's go under here, go to game screen, and game screen, game screen. Set that timer. Go to game screen, please. All right. When the game screen starts, we're going to do a couple of things here. Uh, this may be a little redundant, but we just want to make sure our app works correctly. So we want to go to looks, and we want to make sure we're showing the paddle. So I'm going to copy this, and we want to show the ball when it opens. And then we want to set the paddle position. So I'm actually just going to take it from here. I want to say the paddle position should be not a random integer. We want it exactly at 150. How about 350, which would be pretty close to the uh, bottom right of the screen. Don't need that anymore. Actually, for the sake of space, I'm going to start uh, collapsing some of these blocks. All right. Next thing, we need to build our first function. It'll be a collision function. We'll call it, oops, call it collision. And so we'll start off here with function call it collision. And when uh, this will set it up, so when the paddle hits the uh, ball, we should have a change in score by one. We want to make sure our score label is reflecting that change. So we can set that here. Score label. So we'll set the text, and we want to mix the the um, come on. Okay. We want to mix the uh, some text with the variable value. So we'll start here. We'll say score label should say score. Make sure you put a space after the colon so that there's a space uh, between the value and the variable. So we'll copy this in here. And then last thing, we want to play a sound. So this is where we can open this up under sound. We'll play not the sad trombone, but we'll play the pee sound. All right, so we've got our collision set up. I'm going to collapse this for now. And then we're going to go into our uh, Canvas Events menu. Canvas Events menu. And we want uh, this uh, event, which is the, which indicates when the sprites are colliding. So we'll go when the ball collides with the paddle. We should call the collision function. Collapse this. Get it out of the way. Next, uh, we're going to need a reset procedure. It's going to be a bit more intensive because we got to get all the stuff into it. So we'll call this reset, and we'll. We're going to set some variable values. So we'll set score to zero. And actually, I'm going to reopen this because we can copy some stuff over. So I'm going to duplicate that. And we'll close this down here. So now we got setting the score to zero. We got our score label text. And we need to set the time. So I'm just going to duplicate from here. We'll set the time to 20. Score label text. I'm going to switch it over to the time label. We'll go time. Ooh. Oops, that's when it loads. We'll go time. Make sure there's a space here. Okay, 
There it is. All right, we want to move, make sure everything is set to its original location. So we'll move the ball to, actually, no, it's supposed to be 100 if I didn't get that right. Apologies. We'll do the same thing here. One more 100. All right, we'll set the timer enabled. So when it's reset, we're going to want to turn the timer on. Let's set this to true. And then we're going to do something a little funny here. So try to follow along. We've got to set some things uh, about the motion of the ball. So it's a little funny here. We're going to grab this block that says set paddles X. I'm going to pop it in. But really, I want the ball. And instead of X, I want the angle. And the angle will be at a random from 1 to 100. Pop that in right here. And then I want to set the paddle. So I want to set the ball speed. So let's see here. One more. Our motion. Set ball speed. It says paddle. We'll switch to the ball. And then pointing direction. Okay. Lots going on in our reset uh, function there. Uh, so we'll keep going here. So when the start button is clicked, we'll actually we'll call our reset function. For now, I'm actually going to cl collapse this so we have a little more space. All right, there we go. What else do we need here? Okay, we're going to need a game over procedure. So let's hit the set. Game over. And the game over procedure we're going to do a couple things and I suppose I should keep this open because we can draw some ah expand expand and grab a couple things so I'm going to need this one and duplicate it pop it in so we want to make sure the timer turns off and we go under the canvas menu again the origami motion and we stop all the sprites so we don't want the sprites running around anymore i'm going to play a sound because the game is over we'll play the sad trombone and then we're going to navigate to the game over screen so i believe that is under canvas events nope under control okay navigate to the game over screen and last couple of things here when the ball hits the bottom edge, we want to turn the game. I want to end the game. So let's go up to our canvas events. And so this one will be when the ball collides with the bottom. We should call the game over function. End the game. And then we got to start setting up our timer. So we'll go timer one. When the timer fires, we're going to change the time by negative one. Make sure you get that in there. You want to make sure the, the text, uh, the label is showing on that. All right, and our very last thing is we want to switch over to our game over screen. And when the new button, game button is clicked, we will switch back to the, for now, we should probably go back to the game screen. So we want to navigate there. Or control, navigate to the game screen. All right. That's the basic programming for this app. There's a number of challenges. You can find them on the handout, which is in the description. Uh, good luck.